you know, Lalit Marmik dance used during Kirtan is purely spiritual dance. And Kausiki is a psycho-spiritual dance. It starts in psychic level and culminates in spiritual level. And Tandava is physico-psycho-spiritual. In, in Lalita Marmik, the position of arms is above 90 degrees. This denotes that that it is a mudra, in Sanskrit it is called a mudra. This mudra means, O oh, the Supreme Creator, Thou art mine, and I am yours. I am thine. Now, the everywhere in the world you will see one is in possessive case and another is owned by that person or that entity. That is, each and every object has got certain entitative relationship with others. And what's the entitative relationship with the Supreme Creator? Supreme Creator belongs to one and all, and the created beings all belong to the Supreme Entity. This is the uh, philosophical interpretation. Even in the field of occult science, it is the only interpretation. But for a devotee, the interpretation is not like that. Amongst devotees, there are three clear categories. One category, say, third grade category, they'll say, Oh Lord, you belong to everybody. You belong to one and all. And because I am also included within the scope of all, that's why you belong to me also. You belong to all. That's why you, and I am within the scope of all. I am not beyond the scope of all. So you belong to me also. And the second great devotee will say, no, no, no. It is not the correct psychic approach. You belong to me. And because you belong to me, that's why you belong to all. That is the first thing is you belong to me. And second thing, that is, you, because you belong to me, that's why you belong to others also. And the first great devotee will say, no, 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 it is not the correct approach. You belong to me, and you belong to me only, and not to others. The relationship is purely personal. I don't know any philosophy. I don't know any occult science. I know that you are mine and I am yours. In this realm of relationship, I do not allow any third person to come. The relationship is purely mutual. I may share anything and everything with others. But you are cent per cent mine. I hope you boys and you girls belong to the first grade of devotees. That is, the relationship is a personal one. And in case of this personal relationship, there is some other important aspects of philosophy, and that is in pure philosophy, the Parama Purusha is an impersonal entity. In local science, he is blending of personal and impersonal entities. 
In philosophy, just now I said, the Paramapurusa is an impersonal entity. It is the nucleus of this cosmological order. That nucleus is certainly not a personal entity. Because he is above the scope of all mundane explanations. So, he is certainly an impersonal entity. And in the realm of spiritual cult, he is a blending of personal and impersonal entities. That is, while approaching him, while accepting him as the only object of adoration, he is looked upon as a personal entity. But when his entitative existence is not accepted as the only object of adoration, that is, he is accepted as the only source of creation, in that case he is an impersonal entity. That's why I said that in the uh, cult of spirituality, he is a blending of personal and impersonal entities. But in the realm of devotion, he is purely a personal entity. He is mine. He is my father. He is my closest relative. He is my bigger self. He is not a second entity. That is, the relationship is purely a personal one. There cannot be any love with an impersonal entity. One cannot be in love with an impersonal entity. Love requires a personal entity. Now, as the relationship is a personal one, and as the entity of the Paramapurusa is purely a personal one in the field of divinity or in the field of devotion, the interpretation of the creation also varies from other philosophies, philosophies or occult spirituality. Ask a philosopher why this universe was created, what for the Paramapurusa created this universe? He won't be able to satisfy you with the reply. He will say, perhaps this was his idea, or perhaps that was his idea, perhaps this was the motive, perhaps that was the motive, that the reply is vague, not to the point, never to the point. Ask an adherent to the actional cult, he won't be able to satisfy you with the reply. He will say there are immense, there are so many flows of expression. This universe is a mess of waves of different lengths, of different sounds and different colors. But these replies won't satisfy a devotee, won't satisfy a spiritual aspirant. The spiritual aspirant or a devotee will say, the reply is very simple. My Supreme Father, before the creation, my Supreme Father was alone in this universe. There was nothing. And for want of the queen quail mental factors, there was nothing to see, nothing to do. He was alone. Suppose you are alone in a particular village or in a particular house. What will be your position? What will be your mental condition? You will be just like what? An insane person, a mad. So in this vast cosmos, my father was alone. Just try to feel what was his condition, what was his mental condition. So just to save himself from the monotony of singularity, he created this universe just to play with his children. This is the only reason. I know no other philosophy. This will be the reply of a devotee. 
ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರೆನ್ you boys you girls forget your past and start your life at fresh with this subtlest and noblest idea that you are inseparable particles of that supreme entity of that parama purusha